How does one go about killing a river? It is a crucially important question. For barely a hundred years ago, the St. Mary's River up in northeast Nova Scotia was an extraordinarily productive watercourse known the world over for its remarkable salmon fishing. Its salmon stock supplied food for wildlife, locals, and even drew in celebrities from far and wide. But something went wrong. One of the things that went wrong were forestry practices both from the 19th and early 20th centuries as well as modern forestry practices. In the 19th century, the river banks were smoothed out to send logs riding down the river so they could be easily transported to market and right up to the present vast clear-cutting operations degrade the landscape, creating droughts and acidifying soil. In the past, destructive farming techniques also damaged the landscape and the water tables. And in modern 21st century Nova Scotia, the threat of vast open pit mines, especially gold mines, creates new dangers for the fishery of St. Mary's River. For the residue of the operations of such mines are toxic and create long-standing dangers for any water system. In response to these problems and others, the St. Mary's River Association was devised to address the problems plaguing the river. Their public face can be found in a little building off Highway 7 near Sherbrooke in Nova Scotia, just beside the mighty river they work so proudly to restore. It's a lovely little building, and on the inside hosts a treasure trove of history regarding the St. Mary's River, covering both the river's natural history as well as that of the persons who have loved it. And its displays also explain in succinct but informative form the story of what went wrong, the problems that have plagued this little river. And one can see from that information that part of the problem must be addressed nationally and perhaps internationally by attending to the causes of the mortality of salmon at sea. The St. Mary's River Association itself addresses primarily issues of habitat degradation, water chemistry, and water temperature. Scott Beaver, the president of the association, was kind enough to grant us an interview and described the St. Mary Rivers Association's efforts to conserve this salmon fishery. He also added they are not only involved in conserving salmon, but the endangered snapping turtles and other life that lives alongside this beautiful river. We're at the confluence of the east, where uh, the east branch meets, meets the west branch. The state of the salmon today is much different than it was uh, a decade or two ago. So I think maybe the, the late 80s, uh, the early 90s, the stocks started to deplete. Uh, significantly. Um, around 20, 2009, 2008-ish, the salmon angling season on the St. Mary's River uh, was closed. And at that point, the, the stocks uh, were down uh, quite significantly in this river. In uh, around 2013, uh, our association uh, had the foresight to hire a couple of gentlemen, uh, Sean Mitchell and Chris Hunter, to develop a, a, a strategy around what it, what would it take to uh, bring the salmon population back. Their habitat restoration is our number one. Uh, stock enhancements, so salmon stock enhancements along the river, and access issues, so if there's culverts, the road work that don't allow for uh, habitat, uh, access for salmon and trout too, um, then then we want to work and uh, with the the proper authorities or the departments within the government to try to mitigate some of that stuff. Up until somewhere between one and two centuries ago, the St. Mary's River had always been biologically rich and diverse, a spawning ground of both salmon and sea trout, as well as an important habitat for many other kinds of wildlife. I asked Scott, what went wrong? How did it come to be that this once flourishing river could no longer support the salmon, sea trout, and other wildlife that had so long depended on it? The river got damaged initially back from uh, years and years of uh, really treating it poorly by, by humans. And what we did back in the old days, we, we logged this river heavily and, and straight, what they wanted to do was really straighten it out 
and, and and not have so many bends in it. It's what we need today. What we need for for salmon habitat and to keep them healthy. So to make the logs flow better in the spring, in the when we had high high water, uh, they they really needed the rivers to be near, be wide and you know straight. So so they did a lot of work doing that, and that of course didn't help us out today. It's really made it very difficult for us and they really contributed to uh, poor poor habitat uh, over the years. All it did because of that was become wider and shallower which uh, in those hot summer months become very warm and there's no spots for for salmon to hide from predators or to get cooled off in the in temperatures that they can actually survive in. But if you're in the middle of that water and it's up to 26 degrees salmon are not surviving in that so really the reason why the St. Mary's River does so well uh, w with our habitat for for salmon is because we have these big lakes within the within the system that are you know so far up from the estuary and then so far from the headwaters they're struck they're kind of placed in between naturally which is wonderful for us but they're all filled with uh, spring-fed water so the salmon when the when the conditions are warm in the summer uh, which what climate change is doing for us is warming it up and uh, more and more well we have these beautiful uh, natural refuge sites already in the system so they, they don't have to be out in that in that hot 26 degree flow uh, of water anymore they can move into this into this stuff and that's where they're at and surviving for until we get a big big bump in rain 60 millimeters something brings the river up quickly and then the fish will move up to the next section of the river but while the fish are moving from from that big refuge lake to the to the next big pool or the next site that's where we need to do the habitat work that's where we're doing this uh, sh the, the structure adding the rock structures and armor rock and groans and whatnot is to create these this habitat and, and deeper refuge sites so that they do have this these spots to to hide out from predators and, and stay cool while they're doing that uh, wonderful trip that they do to spawn in the fall. The unobtrusive way in which the St. Mary Rivers Association goes about its work is brilliant. We're now flying over a section of river where they did a considerable amount of work, but only a few years after it was done, it can hardly be noticed and represents an ideal solution. Habitat for the wildlife that blends in perfectly with nature's architecture. But even as the St. Mary's River Association works to restore this habitat, protect its wildlife, and maintain a beautiful and pleasant environment for the community, there are ongoing threats to their work. A proposed open pit gold mine which could drain directly into the St. Mary's River, and ongoing struggles with the aftermath of deforestation. Deforestation is, has been I, probably the, one of the, the biggest threat to uh, Atlantic salmon in Nova Scotia. Uh, and the headwaters, uh, specifically for the St. Mary's, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of clear cutting that's going on. Uh, it's wonderful to protect uh, plots and make them protected along the river banks. It looks wonderful. We're not cutting it. Lots of uh, uh, ecology there that needs to be protected. Indeed, it's good stuff. But in the headwaters of the St. Mary's and other rivers too in Nova Scotia, uh, clear cutting is, is happening. And what that does is doesn't allow after we get these large bumps of rain, it doesn't allow the water really to soak in and slowly enter into the, into the river basin. And, and that's what it used to do and that's what we need. Uh, uh, so today, when we get 60 mils of rain, that water really, because of clear cutting, flows from the banks high up in the, in, in the headwaters of, of the west branch, the east branch, the north branch, hits the river quite quickly and then flows down in, in, and out into the estuary and hits the Atlantic Ocean. Forests, as they age and become well established, create deep loamy soil which captures and holds rainwater like a sponge. Held there for a long period of time beneath the forest shadow, the water cools and is trickled slowly through creeks and streams, down brooks, back into the river. In the presence of old and healthy forests, this cool water would enter the river system slowly, providing the clean and pure conditions salmon and sea trout need to survive. But the SMRA can only take care of the river itself and the riparian area right beside it, clear-cutting going on all around. 
undermines the quality of the water that must feed the ecosystem. Regardless, the SMRA plods on, doing their best to promote a healthy river, and they've done quite a bit. They've done work uh, already within the system, and, and we went at it. We started work. So I'm happy. We're very proud as an organization to say that we're at uh, 25 linear kilometers along this great river system of restored habitat. And what we're actually doing to get to there is narrowing up the river and trying to put uh, armor rock and rock structures back in the river system to, to, to get it to really meander back and forth the way, the way it once did. And again, narrow it and, and create pools within the, the system so that salmon can uh, move from the cold, deep water refuge of the lakes as they move up to spawn. Uh, they can move to the next spot with all this work that we're doing and they have uh, refuge. So, uh, and, and, and we're seeing the results uh, tenfold. We're seeing all kinds of salmon come back now from uh, our work starting back in 2014 from that report to today of 2022. Um, excellent stuff. Ultimately, the work of the SMRA is not just to create a healthy river and ecosystem, but to enrich the lives and health of those persons and the communities that live near the river. And as the SMRA's work carries on, if you happen to be in the area, I would strongly recommend stopping by their little office on Highway 7 and saying hi, and let them know you appreciate what they're doing. The SMRA is a testament to the fact that when people get together to make the world a better place, they can make it happen. Thank you for coming along on this voyage of discovery into the understory. The purpose of the understory channel is to tell the tales of the lives and the science that shape the natural world. If you appreciate the work of the channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. And feel free to hop on over to Facebook and join the understory group, where you can find links to fascinating articles and take part in discussions relevant to natural science. And finally, thanks to the many contributors who make this channel possible.